So I posted an image of this uh, Denon MC7000 saying I just purchased it because it was pretty cheap because it's going out of production. So there's a lot of discounts on it. And I also stated that I almost didn't have to remap it because it could basically do anything out of the box. And of course the questions I got was, what do you mean almost? So here's a very few things that I've done to this unit. Um, it's all actually in the pads section, uh, which is the brilliance of it. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second. But the only thing that I've actually remapped is this button, the key lock. I don't need the key lock because uh, I'm always using key lock. And if I want to uh, do key play, I use key play, I key Q for it. So never need to take this out so that this goes down in pitch and this goes to chipmunks. This is always in key lock. So I didn't, don't need this button, which means I put pitch resets on it, which I actually use a lot when, when mixing to get back to the uh, original, uh, original tempo. So that's pitch reset. So that's basically just this. So it slowly goes back to the original pitch. And then it turns off when it's there, which is now. So you can see this doesn't do anything now. And again, if I go back, click it, it slowly climbs back to 100%. I'll just help it here. Yeah. So that's uh, basically the only real remapping. So uh, the other thing I've done is I've remapped, if you will, all the paths. But that doesn't take remapping anymore because you can actually uh, just select that in the hot cues folder. No, sorry, the hot cues um, drop down. So you basically choose what to put on all these. And there are four of them. And then there's actually double click them, as you can see. And that's actually also shift, but I haven't used that. So shift is basically the same as the second one. So not confuse myself while using it. So that's why I haven't. But you can actually put 12 different, different pad pages in there. Uh, but I'll only use eight. So that's basically the, the thing I've done. And I said, like I said, that's just a drop down. So what if I put in there? Well, most of them are actually the defaults. The queue, like you should write down, is the default. So I can I queue the track and the next queue point. Like that. Um, so that's uh, the default. Then the shift one, I put in key queue because that's also kind of a queue function. So instead of queue loop, so that means I can do. Like that. So that's key queue, pretty cool feature. So that's also there now on the queue section. That was actually somewhere else, but just to put it in the same place so I could remember it while using it, it's now, it's now there. Because as you can see, nothing says key Q on the box, uh, so I didn't get any help from the text anyway. Then uh, the next one, the roll, that stays the same, so I have the roll. Like that. And the next one, the shape loop, those are also the same. So I can trigger a loop here. And then when it gets to it, it'll start looking at like shape loop does. Disable it again, and so on. So that's the same, it's what it says in the box. Then there's uh, the big one, if you will, that's the slicer button. It has a slicer and a slicer loop. Uh, I occasionally use slicer, but that's not my main thing. So I've actually removed slicer from here and I put it on the say, slicer loop. So if I want the slicer, I just click one more time. So I can do. Like that regular slicer. So there's just two clicks and then I'm in the slicer mode. But the main one here, and the one I probably use the most while DJing, is this one. And that's just the one I call main, because I use it a lot. Um, or master differs a little bit. But that's um, that's the one I put on most controllers. So some of the stuff this thing does uh, is uh, can also be done elsewhere on the controller, because I use it for basically all my controllers. Uh, but most of it can't. So we'll get back to that in a second, because that's probably the most interesting one. And then the, the next one is just a sampler, like you would expect it. So regular samples. Right now in on off mode, you can also put it in starter mode. And of course, you click down here to get the next sample pack. Oh, um, so like that. 
So that's the simple one. And then finally, if I click it one more time, I get, um, then I get stems. Uh, and this is not the regular stems. This is also my own one. So I have two uh, pet pages basically that are my own ones. So it does the same as, uh, as um, if I start here. It basically does the same as, as a regular pitch one. So it removes the dumps. Removes the bass. Removes the instruments. And the vocals. But what it also does is that it uh, that it uses the uh, the effects stems effects instead. So if I go ahead and use the first instead, so I get some vocals like this. Then if I click into this one, I can for instance just put effect whatever effect I choose just on the vocals. I'm doing this like this, and let's try echo. So that's the stems effects. And of course it's the same one as the top one. So this will be vocals, this will be instruments, this will be bass, and this will be drums. So I can put echo on just drums. Pretty boring stay place for that in this track, but you get what I mean. So that's the steps, stems pad page. And then there's uh, the final pad page, uh, the one I was uh, skimming just before. And that was the one I called main or master. And uh, it actually does a lot of different things because that's the ones, except for the hot cue one, which I of course use all the time. This one, the master one is the one I, I'm on all the time while mixing and doing gigs. Uh, that's the two ones I use uh, by far the most. So what does it do? Well, it does different things. So the first one is a quick uh, break. So I can do, let me just do the other cue, this one, a bit more interesting. And so I can do, and it automatically starts again. So it's a fast break, like that. The next one is a slow break. So that's for mixing out, obviously. If I let it run, it will eventually start again, like that. Next one is a pitch lock, which means that if I enable that, uh, then the two decks will adjust the same way on pitch locking. And I actually mostly use that when if I go crazy with the with the pitch change and then want to bring it back slowly, then I can lock them together and use the pitch reset to bring them back together. It's a pretty cool feature. I use that a few times a night when I'm DJing. And uh, the final one in the top top row is to uh, arm the echo out, which is a relatively new, um, relatively new feature. So maybe I can go and I can arm it. And then when it, almost whatever I do to stop the music, it'll get, give me an echo. And I've set it up to always be one beat. Like that. It's still armed, so I can do the same with Q. And of course, the purpose is to mix into something else. Oh, sorry. So that's the first one on the top row. The four button ones are actually uh, auto mix effects. So the idea is that it automatically mixes to the other deck. You have to remember to turn it up. But apart from that, it automatically mixes to the other deck. So on the other deck, I have another track, this one. So aligned at the same tempo uh, and starting on the one on a Q. So that means I can play one track and push one of these four, four buttons and it'll also, then automatically when I release it, it'll mix. And so it's Mobius, which means I have four Mobius effects that runs while I press the button and then while I let go of the pad, then it, it changes uh, it's, uh, do, and does the mix for me. So I can play this and I can do. And now it's this track over here playing. I can do the same thing over here, do the next one because that's also Mobius, but that's with the sawtooth, so. And now we're back to this deck. The two next ones are the same ones, except they go down instead of up, so it'd be. So now we're over here, I can do the same to go back, stuff with the sawtooth. Like that. So those are my auto mixes, which I also use a couple of times a night. It's a pretty cool little nifty feature. And then I also have something on the shift buttons. 
So the first four ones are basically to change the filter uh, knob up here. So the first one is just filter, so I can do and add filter on it. This is a sample filter, because I use it quite a lot instead of EQing while mixing. Like that. And the next one, this one, is actually uh, an echo. So it's kind of the same as some of the other ones. I use a lot for mixing out. And then it's on the next one. Like that. And of course the other one is uh, the other one is uh, is goes dark instead. So this goes light. And this goes dark. The next one is the uh, is the noise effect. So I put the noise on the filter. So that means I can you don't even need to play the track, you can just use this. But of course you'll normally be playing that track, so maybe something like this. So use it like kind of a sweep on top of whatever you're doing. And the last one over here is also is also uh, stems. So that's vocals stems on this one. So if I go to back to and run the first one with the vocals, uh, and I go uh, in here, sorry, I go in here, sorry, I go in here and have this on, uh, on vocals, then uh, this goes to vocals, so I can isolate the vocals. And remove the vocals. Like that. And then the four button ones are actually um, almost uh, uh, something that can, uh, are all something that can be done elsewhere on this control, but maybe not on other controllers. So the first one is a pitch reset, just like the one that I mapped up here uh, for faster access. But if I don't have buttons on a small controller, I can also have a pitch reset here. And the other ones over here are the loop rolls I use most. Of course, on this one, I'll just pick this for the loop rolls. But uh, on some controllers, I'll run around these three buttons. So, so half a beat, no, sorry, quarter of a beat and half a beat is there. And then for effect, a third of a beat is here. So that's basically all I've done to this controller. I've mapped the key lock one to be pitch reset instead. And then I've redone some of these. And all but two of them are standard. It's just picked from the uh, from the drop down. It's already included in Virtual DJ. And then for two of them, uh, my main or master one here and a, an alternative to, uh, to handling stems, if you will, those two pad pages I've created myself. But it's all, of course they were all written in my software. So while getting this, uh, this controller, all I did was just change whatever these does by using the uh, the pad page drop down right in Virtual DJ. So very 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 simple to read up this thing because well, it does basically everything out of the box. Uh, if you're interested in the uh, in the two pad pages, I'll leave uh, them in the description. Uh, I've also done several other videos on those. Uh, most of the features on uh, anyway, uh, way back, uh, but but it will they'll be down there if you need them. So that's it.